Hey guys, it's David Parker and in this video we're going to talk about our fuel tanker, how it works, why we use it on deployment, and some of the aspects about what makes us successful utilizing it and why we picked it. The reason we're making this video is because one of you guys asked for a video about the fuel tanker, about how it works, how we use it on deployment. So if you have something that you want to know about our deployments or some of our equipment, drop us a comment below. Go ahead and subscribe while you're dropping the comment below and maybe we'll make your video. The reason we have a fuel tanker is after a natural disaster, there is no fuel. All the fuel has been consumed by the people leaving the event. Everybody's exiting in the area and there is no fuel. When we deploy on a hurricane, we take a convoy of vehicles. And in this convoy, there are seven semi trucks, 20 to 30 pickup trucks and the generators. They all need fuel. They all need gas. They all need the stuff that we bring along with us with this tanker. The first thing that we want to talk about, if you want to know about a fuel tanker, this would be traditionally what's used to provide infrastructure refueling to normal gas stations in most areas. So this particular tanker is a four compartment, which means there's a large compartment in the front, a large compartment in the back, and then two smaller compartments in the middle. And what these separate compartments allow us to do is we can take diesel and we can take gas and we can take varying quantities of what we need. So when we deploy, we typically take like three or 4,000 gallons of gas and we take four or 5,000 gallons of diesel. In tanker trailers, you can have smoothbore tankers, which means it is just the whole tank is one big compartment. You can have baffled compartments and you can have individual compartments. This trailer is individual compartments and it has double bulkheads, which means that the compartment that separates the front compartment and then the next compartment are separate and then there's an air gap to the ground, there's no chance of cross-contamination. So we don't have to worry about the diesel in the front of the compartment mixing with the gas that's in the next compartment. All right, so when you come to tanker trailers, one of the innovations happened in the last few years is the loading and unloading heads kind of serve a dual function. In the past, they would fill the tank from the top. So you go to a yard and they would fill it overhead. Now you fill it from these heads and this head that we use, this is a four inch head, there's a six inch head and you put a big, we call it the rack, and you go to the rack and you can put the six heads on and you can load all four compartments at one time. So we could do like off-road diesel, on-road diesel, a high-octane gas, a low-octane gas, or any combination that we wanted. And then when we get in the field, we kind of reverse these same heads and we put a smaller nozzle on here to take the four inch down to two inch and we put a pump that allows us to make this like a portable gas station so we can then utilize hand pumps like you see at the gas station and we connect them onto here. So on deployment what we basically have is we have our own portable service station. So these tracks like we talked about are designed primarily to gravity fuel into the ground through large hoses like you've seen on the side of the road. That doesn't really work for us because we need like a filling station. So now we're going to show you how we turn this tanker trailer that's traditionally used just to deliver fuel into a portable service station. So in a traditional tanker trailer, there'd be one of these boxes. We've added a couple of extra boxes so that we have some more flexibility. Of course, we have our fire protection. We have our gas absorbing mats. So they're kind of special. You can throw that in water and it'll just pick up the diesel fuel and it'll leave the water behind. And so then what we have is we have our adapter. As I mentioned, we gotta get from that four inch down to a two inch. So we're gonna pop this guy off right here. You could have a little residual, so that's why we uh, have a bucket there. So then we add in our two inch fitting and we put that on the load head. And then we've created these pumps that are traditionally used to do transfer tanks. But so what we do is we add this transfer pump to the load head now. We actually have two of these for just demonstration. We'll just put one on. We typically take gas and we take diesel. So in this compartment, we typically have gas. This compartment we typically have diesel and then gas and then diesel. And these are a 12 volt pump. And so we've, we've wired this trailer to accept the 12 volts. And then one thing we like to do while we're out is we always filter all of our fuel. So we put the filter on. And then after we put the filter on, we come back and we put on the hose that we're gonna utilize in this case to fuel up the truck. And so now, we have a filtered supply. It comes out of the belly valve, comes through the pump, it gets filtered, and then we would put this nozzle here with the swivel. We go into the vehicle that we're fueling. We can repeat this same process. As you can see, 
We have spare hoses, extension hoses, gravity fill hoses. We have a lot of different configurations for whatever we're doing. Sometimes we find ourselves in a position where we can get the tank elevated and we can just gravity the fuel off, or if we have to pump it, we utilize this system. So we have gravity, pressurized, we have another pump, so we can do diesel and gas at the same time while we're deployed. If you're wanting to know how it works, as you're driving down the road and you see one of these trucks and you know that this thing can hold like 9,000 gallons of fuel, if there was a wreck and this head that has the valve on it, you know, we're not gonna open it because we have fuel, but if we open this, fuel would go to here. But what's neat about these trailers is they have belly valves under them. And on this particular trailer, in this compartment, it utilizes air and the air turns on the belly valves for each compartment. So this is one, two, three, and four. So in this case, we're on load head two. So we would move this position and it would open the belly valve, which would let fuel come here. So in this case, if we were to open this, all the fuel that could come out of the trailer right now is just what's left in this pipe. It wouldn't empty the whole trailer. So that's kind of a safety aspect of, the, of how the tanker trailer works. But by having this arrangement, we can now carry diesel and gas and we can fuel cars, generators, big transfer tanks. When we got to the customer site and they had like a large tank and we were gonna give them two or 3,000 gallons of fuel, we also have the large hoses that are traditional to the fueling industry in the tanker. We have these two inch hoses, three inch hoses, four inch hoses that then can connect from the load head into the pump and then our discharge pump, we can pump large quantities. And then this is hooked to a hydraulic pump that has hoses that connect to the tractor. And if you go back and look, we've done a video about what a wet kit is. It's a hydraulic power takeoff unit off of the tractor that allows us to pump hydraulic fluid here to turn this big pump under here. And we can do three to 400 gallons a minute and we can pump the whole tanker off if we had to pump it into a customer uh, on the hurricane, if there was a customer that needed fuel up higher or into a, a different tank, we could do it. So all these hoses gives us a lot of configuration. And since we have these extra two inch hoses on here, if we were a long way from our tanker, we could put the two inch hose on and we have stands for these pumps and we could move it over and we can move our service station farther away from the tanker trailer if access was a problem. This is our fuel containment that goes under it, our pump. We typically have the, the five gallon bucket there just to keep our oil dry rags in and our different parts to keep the fuel, that any fuel that we might spill, we can you know clean up with our oil dry rags. We keep those in the bucket. You know, sometimes if you have a little drips while the different connections or something, we can keep all that cleaned up. But basically we've created a portable fueling station that we can use on site during our deployment. Well guys, thanks for watching and thanks for following along. You now see how we make a portable gas station when we go into theater or into the event or the disaster recovery event, whether it's a hurricane or a man-made disaster. You kind of get the behind the scenes of what it takes to make a portable gas station in the field. If you have a question about how one of our pieces of equipment that we utilize on a hurricane works, leave a comment below. This video got made because you guys commented below and maybe we'll make your video. And you guys should have always, if you comment, you should take a time to like and subscribe. 98% of you people that watch our videos don't even subscribe. 2%, 2% of you guys subscribe. If you watch the video, you can subscribe. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps us a lot.